Everyone say goodbye to this beautiful face. Goodbye. Uh-oh, Okabe has consumed the powder. Oh, what? Oh, the powder that makes you say yes? Yep. Nice. I forgot that's where we saved. All right. Uh, we're looking for our uh, contacts, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta go to con. I for I remember how this works. Uh, phone wave. Lukaku places her finger on top of mine. On top of the send button. Thank you. Okabe-san. Oh, I'll never forget how they butchered your your ending. <sighs> Look at how they massacred my girl. <laughs> Farewell, my love. God damn. Well, the number went up at least. Sick. I do... Th that this video game does have what every video game needs, which is colorful numbers that get bigger when you do good. That is one way of describing <laughs> video games, yes. Yes, especially this video game. That's what this one is about. <laughs> mm. The warmth of Lukaku's hand slips away as the vertigo hits me. I'm just setting my phone timer, don't worry about it. <laughs> My phone timer, I mean looking at the time and then thinking ahead. <laughs> Setting my brain timer. Setting my brain timer. I'm still at the shrine, but I no longer feel Lukaku clinging to my back. I turn around slowly. Who's ready for this scene to get problematic as fuck? Does it? Oh, fuck. I mean, probably. Ha, uh, ha. Nah. Nah. Ha. <laughs> Lukaku is standing a short distance away as if to see me off no tears just a bewildered smile my chest feels like it's about to burst must be all that E <laughs> I hold it back hey Lukaku yes you're I hesitate for a moment, but I have to know. You're, uh, wait, that's you. <laughs> Do you want it? <laughs> no. <sighs> Lukaku. Fuck it, I'm not even trying. Uh, yeah? Uh... That line's fine. That line's fine. Luca is still cute. We still respect our our trans friend. Yes. Uh, despite the the difficult sacrifice she made for the good of the world, bind to to uh, go from cis to 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 give up her cis hood. <laughs> to we still respect and love and appreciate our wonderful trans icon, and we'll still date her in this world, line. You can't stop us. <laughs> Oh, good! It's Aww. this. It's, it's, it's this yeah. gag. It's back. Time to time to have a nice. Oh, I surprise. can't wait for that to come back in Steins Gate Zero. Oh yeah, good stuff. I bite my lip. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up, Okabe. Do you like me? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't understand. Do you like me? Uh, I respect you. Wait. Luca respects me? I don't deserve her respect. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you don't, bitch. But that's not what matters now. Lukaku's answer seemed clear, but wasn't. She didn't answer the question. Oh, if I change back to how things were, I'll have to f hide my feelings. Oh, going back in the queer closet. 
going back into one club. Yeah, the fe- <laughs> hiding the feelings of being straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Lukaku might still like me. <laughs> End of sentence. End of sentence. Oh, I can't wait to not be in the middle of this mental oh gymnastics. My God. However, this is so hard. However, she'll never speak honestly about those feelings. This is what Lukaku decided for herself. It would be wrong to pry any further. Despite the fact that I reciprocate. I don't know how to express that. Maybe I'm just running away. Maybe I should probably force her to f- confront her feelings. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Luca. Okay, we're but- holding a coming out party for you. <laughs> in universe, that's a shitty thing to do. Be like, hey, I'm gonna force you to admit that, you- like, in universe, I'm gonna force you to admit that not only are you gay, but you love me, <laughs> and then not reciprocate. Yep. But good thing, canonically <laughs> speaking, uh, Luca is still straight. So <laughs> this entire scene just doesn't make sense yeah. by all accounts. But I'm not strong enough to accept the consequences. I'll just end up hurting Lukaku. <laughs> Thank you. You are my disciple. Now and forever. Agreed? Yes, of course I am. That's the beginning to some really kinky shit right there. <laughs> I look away, unable to bear her shy smile. The world line has changed. Lukaku is no longer cis. <laughs> I don't want to say back to being trans because she's always been trans. It, it's a weird, it's a weird dichotomy. It it it's yeah. Which means the IBN fifty one hundred should be here at the stri- shrine. Look at this stock ass photograph. <laughs> On the previous world line, Lukaku broke the IBN fifty one hundred while cleaning the storehouse, but. In this world line, Lukaku didn't clean the storehouse. She never had. She never broke the IBN fifty one hundred. It's six forty six p.m. Judging by past experience, it's very likely that I've averted Mayuri's death for today. But just in case, I should get back to the lab within the hour. Lukaku, do you remember breaking an old computer in the shrine storehouse last year, and then instead of just taking it to a dump, putting it in a coin locker for some reason? Ahaha, uh, I don't remember the time that I did that last year, and absolutely did that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> an old computer? No, I don't remember anything like that. I don't know what a computer is. What's the internet? I don't know what the internet is. In the previous world line, she trembled when I asked her the same question. She That world line, she discovered the internet. <laughs> Thus the fear. <laughs> oh no, Luca discovers the internet. And then she forced a smile as if to avoid admitting that she broke the computer. But she's not trembling now. Lukaku honestly does not know. Go get your father for me. Disciple. <laughs> I like how Luca's father is important enough to have a portrait and shit. And even though in none of the other side In the characters. grand scheme of the story. He's here for like one or two scenes. He's a, he's a living MacGuffin, okay? <laughs> I asked Lukaku to fetch his father for me. Ah, oh. is that the first time I fucked up? Yeah, I think so. Wow, thirty-seven episodes, and that's the first. Uh. Mm. I'd like to apologize to everyone who I've let down. Um, I want you to know that I take this violation of your trust incredibly seriously. Um, Put a coin in the gender jar. I'm putting a coin in the Put gender a coin jar. In the gender jar. I'm not putting a coin down your tits. I'll get you a coin. Please, Do it. Please stop just opening your shirt <laughs> and wanting me to put something down your tits. <laughs> I need 25 cents for laundry. You That's have not, to put it in there. Th- we have quarters. Over yeah, those on... were the ones I was going to get you. I like how you'd break open another roll, a new roll of quarters just for the gag of me putting one quarter down your shirt <laughs> and then moving on. I asked Lukaku to fetch her father for me so I can ask him whether or not the IBM 5100 was in the storehouse. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Which one of us was Luca's dad? An old computer. So yes, I do remember. Also, I sound like the judge from Ace Attorney now. I also don't know what is the internet. I'll go check. Please, wait a moment. He heads into the storeroom out back, just like on the previous world line. Why won't you click? But on the previous world line, the IBM 5100 was no longer in the storehouse, since Lukaku had secretly moved it. How will it turn out this time? Luca's dad returns after about ten minutes. His expression is grave. It's all the answer I need. Nothing has changed. It's gone! I... I couldn't find it anywhere! I quickly glance at Lukaku's face. Blank. She doesn't seem to know anything. <laughs> no thoughts had empty. No thoughts had empty. <laughs> Lukaku is innocent. I'm sure of it. I'm gonna be like, there's gonna be a lot of egg on my face if you can hear me detangling this entire time because... <laughs> mm, sound off in the comments about the sound of detangling. Please don't. Listen, long hair problems and I haven't been able to get a haircut in forever. Don't judge me. The lock to the storehouse was broken. Someone may have stolen it. Well, that's just silly. Why would someone steal a lock? Oh, stop this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, when did when did I become the straight man to your obnoxiousness? Has <laughs> always? Wasn't it the other way around? Was it? Stolen when was it. I not the screwball of this duo? <laughs> it didn't disappear? Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> a thief took it. <clears throat> Are we the rare screwball screwball pairing homo comedic? Oh. I'm just going to ignore you now. <laughs> There's evidence someone you better. <laughs> There's evidence someone dragged something heavy away. There wasn't it was that wasn't there at the end of your cleaning, and the lock wasn't broken when I checked last month. Looks like you missed it. By like a month, you fucked up. I never expected a thief would break in. <laughs> I thought they'd knock. I mean, it's just common courtesy. <laughs> then shouldn't we report it to the police? No, Luca, a cab. <laughs> Right, that's one of the tenets of swordsmanship you were telling me. <laughs> While they discuss what to do, I sigh and consider the situation. <sighs> this isn't going to work. The IBM 5100 is still out of reach. There are two emails left to cancel. Something tells me that if I cancel just one more, I can get back the IBM 5100. Wow! <laughs> but which one? <laughs> Gotta go in order, right? Um, Okabe-san, I don't really understand, but please don't be sad. Just go, it matters not, like you always do. I chuckle. Lukako's so adorable when he... When she's trying to cheer me up. What is with me today? I am so... Another quarter in the gender jar. Another quarter in the gender jar. I'm that's so... 50 whole cents. That's 50 whole cents in the gender jar right there. I have earned so much money today. I love the phrase gender jar because it's alliterative. What do you mean you earned that money? That's literally money that we share. <laughs> You're using that phrase wrong, you know. I wave goodbye and leave the shrine. I just gotta stop reading on autopilot. That's what it is. Two D-mails remain. First, the one I sent to myself with the winning lot of six numbers. That one should be easy to cancel. Problem is the other one. The one sent by someone I wish I could forget. Yeah, we've kind of been forgetting about her this entire time. Hmm. Kiryu Moeka. She showed up for a little bit, long enough to send a D-mail, and then just fucking pieced out of the story until she popped back in to shoot someone. 
Now here's what throws me. Yeah. Chronologically, which one was hers in order of sending? Uh, we did hers second. Oh, so hers was before everybody else's so far? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, we are just going like, um, we are just clearing the stack from the top to the bottom. Okay, I had misremembered and thought hers was one of the later ones and was like, huh, that seems odd. No, because uh, she fucking pieced. I know the gist of her email since she sent it as part of our early experiments. When Moeka asked to send a email, I agreed under two conditions. First, make the content simple enough that the email's effects would be obvious. Second, make the contents public to all lab mems. Moeka ended up sending a email to prevent herself from buying a new phone a few days prior. The email was sent to July 31st, an easy date to remember. The question is how it relates to the theft of the IBM 5100. It must be the butterfly effect, as it was with Lukago's D mail. <laughs> what? It, the kerning was perfect, okay? Not kerning. Um, line break? Line break, there it is. This time, however, I will not hesitate to do what is necessary. Hesitates to do what's necessary. Kiryu Moeka does not deserve my sympathy. That woman and her men have killed Mayuri more times than I can bear to remember. I will show her no mercy. There's just one problem. Uh, the cancellation email needs to be sent from Moeka's own phone. I don't think a message from me telling her not to change phones would sway Moeka's intentions in the slightest. I need her phone, but I don't know where to find her. What do I do? I just realized... Um... Kurisu is giving the fucking DreamWorks eyebrow. And now that I've seen it... <laughs> I can't unsee it, and it makes me so sad. <clears throat> I return to the lab and set things up so I can time leap at a moment's notice. Fortunately, that is not necessary. Hey, Okabe! I'm here! I'm All my meat's on the inside! Yeah! <laughs> I am stuffed. I barely ate today, so I was hungry. Is there more tomorrow? What are they talking about? Komima. Oh yeah, Komima. Yeah, and the day after, too. And Karisu is pretending not to be interested. Got it. Mayuri just got back from Komima 30 minutes ago. She and Karisu, who stayed behind at the lab, have just finished eating cup noodles. It's already past eight, and so far, nothing has happened. Mayuri is still alive. Going by the pattern, her death prob has probably been postponed until about this time tomorrow. Is this the will of some higher being? God, fate, the universe itself? Or is it merely coincidence? <clears throat> that doesn't matter now. <laughs> Okie dokie. Mayushi's got an early day tomorrow, so I'm going home. All right, have a good one, Mayushi. Mayuri takes a big stretch and starts getting ready to go home. She's been up since five this morning. Looks like she plans to wake up early tomorrow, too. I discovered caffeine, Okabe! <laughs> it's so great! You drink it and you don't feel asleep anymore, and there's no side effects. <laughs> That reminds me, I haven't seen Daru at all. He's fighting the in the Komima Holy War, too. So that doesn't surprise me. Busy checking his spoils, Gotta I guess. Gotta get himself that grail. <laughs> Did he get the uh, limited edition Sarah figurine? What was it, Sarah from... Blood Tune. From Blood Tune? Yeah, there we go. Hey, guys. Why don't you come, too? I'll pass, but my assistant looks like she wants to go. What? Karisu jumps up at my answer. Hey, don't put words in my mouth. I wasn't putting words... Okay, maybe I was. <laughs> Rips out book pages and starts... <laughs> for speedy... Okay. <clears throat> I saw your eyes sparkling while you listened to Mayuri's cosplay stories. 
Maybe, but nobody said anything about going. Come on, Chris Chan. You're literally fooling no one. No one here was fooled by you. <laughs> I know Carisu is an at channeler, but is she an otaku? Almost assuredly. Not all at channelers are otaku, but she has often hinted at an interest in cosplay. Wait, I just realized. Carisu is like the scum of the internet. She hangs out on 4chan. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, Carisu. Oh no. No way. I'd suffocate in a crowd like that. It's not as crowded on day two. If you're worried, come in the afternoon. All the popular stuff will be sold out, though. Remember that time we traded Mayuri's life for cosplay photos? <laughs> I do. Yeah. You go, Okabe. You're Mayuri's guardian, aren't you? I, I hold her hostage. There's a difference there. Oh, we okay, we are just doing no, that guy again. Oh, Mayushi is Okarin's hostage. <clears throat> oh, right, that's what it was. <laughs> is absolutely not happy to be here. Well, you don't want your hostage to escape, do you? Shouldn't you take her along in handcuffs or something? <laughs> oh, I've got business in Akiba <laughs> what do you mean business I mean business the search for Kiryu Moeka I already sent her an email we need to talk and now I'm awaiting her reply something tells me it's not going to work I mean it's a good first step I mean <laughs> right because if it works and you're like wow I just saved myself a whole lot wow it was that easy wow <laughs> Well, that was easy. No answer. Well, I guess it was just an excuse. <clears throat> Christina, we also need to talk. Again? Abrupt as usual. What, are you a time traveler or some shit? Listen, we've got... Okay, actually, you know what? We haven't... <laughs> huh? What do you mean, again? Nothing. Asshole. What you gonna talk about? Girls. <laughs> you two have been really close lately, huh? You're always talking together. Yeah. <clears throat> Mayushi really wants to join in your secret meetings and stuff. <laughs> I don't think you do. No, you don't. <laughs> this is the existential dread club. <laughs> don't worry, we've been talking about the time leap machine. Uh, it wouldn't be very interesting to you. Wow, fuck you two. I... <laughs> I made it reasonable. Okay? Not entirely accurate, but not a lie either. <laughs> Besides, the purpose of this particular discussion is to convince Christina to attend Komima. Prepare for good news, Mayuri. <laughs> ah. Oh, great. Thanks, Okarin. You're welcome. So nice <laughs> that I get to record these. Just laying back instead of hunched. I'm just remembering our old setup where we were hunched over the table. Yeah. And I don't miss it. Me neither. Mayuri waits in the lab as I take Karisu outside. So, Christina. <clears throat> I'm not going to Komima. You said again just now. 
We've talked like this before, just the two of us? Losing your memory now? Does our little mad scientist have an acetylcholine deficiency? Damn, you just got that in one! <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been sitting here puzzling out how to pronounce it, and you're just like, fuck that. <laughs> this casual <laughs> word trash is nothing to me. Yeah, but that's... It wasn't like Yosemite and other words I can't I say. I still can't believe you pronounced it Yosemite. Yeah. Nothing about that makes sense. <laughs> it's perfect, Sads. Oh my... There's literally a popular children's cartoon character named Yosemite Sam. Which is a different word. It is... I'm being serious. <laughs> You're acting weird today. What's going on? Please, I need to know. I mean, yeah, this is like the fifth time you brought me outside to talk about the time leap machine. Have we talked about my time leaping? For an instant, Karisu opens her eyes wide in surprise. But then she gives me an angry glare. You're time leaping? Cox gun! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Karisu, time police! I nod. Oh. It's been more than a dozen times. It's been a lot more than a dozen times. Listen, it's I literally cannot count them anymore. <laughs> That many? What the hell are you doing? I keep forgetting the more timelines we go back, the less and... Act Does that make sense? No, I guess that doesn't make sense. I was going to say the less and less acclimated Karisu is, has been to the idea of its time moving, but that doesn't make sense, because in each, in each fucking world line, that's like it's not like we've been doing it a whole bunch in front of her. But to some extent it does. We're gradually undoing all of our... No, the emails were already sent. We just sent other emails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm. 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 My gut was wrong. Hmm. <clears throat> Looks like she doesn't know anything about Lukaku or my shifting between world lines, but that's only natural. So far, I've changed world lines a total of three times. Oh, good. We're doing a little recap here. Let's call the first line Wait. where Myri died Alpha One. But have we changed world line? Oh. oh, like going backwards. Sorry, sorry. Like in in our quest to undo everything that we've done, not leading up to that point. I thought that we didn't change world lines until we crossed the divergence barrier. No, no, no. no. We're changing world lines, but we're trying to get to a world line that's heading to a new attractor field. Oh, right. It's yeah. Yeah, because there are multiple you. world lines, but they're all still converging on the same thing. Okay. Yep. The world line where Ferris and I fight the fought the viral attackers is Alpha Two. The world line where I dated Lukaku is Alpha 3. And now I'm on Alpha 4. From my perspective, Alpha 1, 2, and 3 were undone by D-Mails. But for Karisu and everyone else on Alpha 4, those world lines were nothing but separate, intangible possibilities to begin with. I guess I have to explain everything again. I sigh heavily, and then begin. Alright, class is now in session. I think I get it. After I'm done, Karisu sighs and lightly pats my arm. <sighs> That's where your arm belt should go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wear yourself out. <laughs> it's a disgrace to be comforted by my ass. <laughs> Instant. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> I'm even trying to be nice. You're really full of yourself, you know? Honestly, it's a coping mechanism. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the shit I've seen and done already, this is just kind of how I deal with it, so I'm sorry. I don't need your sympathy. Everything that has happened is my fault. I'm just getting what I deserve. <laughs> Come to think of it, every time I explain this to you, I always end up hating myself in the end. 
Okabe. Yeah. They don't talk about it as often as they really should, but Okabe is not well. Yeah. Yeah. It, you see it more in the sequel. And yeah, yeah, yeah. In Steins Gate Zero, it's, it, it's front... Uh, Okabe's mental health is front and center. But here it's just kind of like... Just casually mentioned as a casualty of, you know. Anyway, don't worry about me. Worry about my Yuri. My Yuri will probably die tomorrow. And I don't know how it will happen. If my Yuri stays away from the lab, she can probably avoid running into Moeka and her men. Doesn't matter, though. She'll die all the same. All Alpha World Lines converge on her death. Escaping the attractor field is the only way to save her. Honestly, that's got to be some, like, weird shit to discover that your friend is a fucking main character in the, in, like, the literal cosmic sense. <laughs> right? Like, that, that's got to be a trip. Yeah. I'm sorry about this, but I want you to be there when she dies tomorrow night. That's why you want me to go to Komima. <clears throat> There's nothing we can do to prevent her death. Just stay close and tell me when it happens. Yeah, there isn't really anything you can do because even under the best of circumstances, she just drops dead. <laughs> like, even when the universe can't fucking fabricate some reason for her to die, she'll literally just stop in place and die. See, what I was picturing is, what if it's an increasingly ridiculous series of circumstances where Shining Finger kills her, and it's just like, oh, shoots a bullet into the sky, it comes down 15 minutes later and hits Mayushi. Oh, that would be Ope, hilarious. just like, no scope, tosses a knife over her shoulder out the window, it immediately impales Mayuri, who happens <laughs> to be walking nearby. She's been practicing Ope drops her. a banana peel. <laughs> Hours later, Mayuri strolls by. <laughs> that would be funnier. <laughs> but uh, the One World line, uh, where she uh, died during at the end of Komima, or uh, during the night, when we were there with her, she just stopped in place and died. Yeah. So. Alright. Anyway, once I know, I'll make the time leap. I can't believe there's nothing we can do. Listen, she literally dropped dead in front of me. It just Ugh. doesn't feel real, but it's the truth, isn't it? I can see it in your eyes. Are you okay? Do you want to do it? Okay. No, you can. Buster. <laughs> No. I still haven't saved my you. I know, that's not what I meant. Karisu interrupts me. Are you okay? Busted. No. Oh, oh. Right. <laughs> okay, it's kind of like a reflex now. I don't follow. You're carrying an awful burden. It's rare for her to look so concerned for me. I told you, you don't need to worry about me. It's Mayuri that you need to worry about. Tomorrow, I'm going to look for Moeka. If Mayuri doesn't die tomorrow, I can postpone the time leap. If Mayuri does die tomorrow, I'll return to the past no matter what. I wish there were some way that Mayuri wouldn't have to suffer. Wait, what if you killed her non-lethally? <laughs> killed her non-lethally! Okay, non pain Okay, hold on. That's, I need... That's... I need a break, clearly. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. And... Oh... Alright, light me up in the comments. I deserve it. Non-lethally, though. <laughs> You gonna read your line no. or okay? Uh, then why don't you time leap now? I can't plan effectively without knowing the deadline. 
Yeah, that's fair. That's, yeah, fair. I don't want to see Mayuri die either, you know? <sighs> I know how you feel, but you're the only one I can ask. Plus, I'm just going to time leave and you won't remember, so really it's a wash, morally speaking. <laughs> oh my god, it is not... Okay. Actually, no, I was arguing that it you more... You were? Yep. No, never mind. I agree. 100%. I yep. don't. Uh, where did all this trust come from? You're my assistant, after all. Kurisu forces a laugh at my feeble attempt at a joke. You're so funny. <laughs> You're so full of yourself. <laughs> oh, with I the horns! <laughs> We have our plan. For some reason, you trust me as though we've known each other for years. It's weird. And... Co oh! Okabe. Okabe thousand yard stares. Yeah. Uh, Kurisu will go to her first Komima. Mary will be so delighted when I tell her the news. Oh, we got mail. It comes up on a whale. You've got mail, ass face. Headed out. Oh, joined up with Mayuri. We're heading out to Ariake. Kind of excited, lol. Nice. Morning, Okarine. I'm heading off now. I had no idea it would be this crowded. Save me. Oars. Uh, can we respond to that? We cannot. Okay. <clears throat> I haven't seen Mayuri all day. I want to be with her, of course, but that's not possible. Moeka hasn't replied, which means I have to find her myself. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about her. Hmm. I, for I forget how he goes about figuring out where she's at. but hmm. My only clue is Arc Rewrite, the company Moeka supposedly worked at. I find it after a quick search online. Sure enough, their business is producing articles <clears throat> for PC magazines. Uh, I hate political correctness magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, their office is in Akiba. I try calling first, but it goes to voicemail. I guess they're still closed for the Oban holiday. Or maybe it's just a bad time. Looks like I got no choice but to visit them in person. It's the second day of Komima, and Akiba is deserted. Most of the otaku are lined up at big site right now. I've experienced the craze of Komima several times firsthand. It's literal war. It scares me whenever Mayuri goes alone. I can't help but imagine her trampled by a horde of crazed otaku. Because that happened that one time. There was one world line where that happened. It was like 8pm, everyone had gone home, and yet there they were. <laughs> but in reality, Mayuri's surprisingly quick and tough. I've seen her weave through crowds like you wouldn't believe. Fucking called it. Mayushi is the proper choice for the fighting game rep. There you go. <laughs> Kurisu's the one more likely to get trampled. But Chris is the only one that's actually been in a fighting game. I can't help for but- For some reason. I Right? It's awesome. I can't help but feel sorry for her. Maybe it was <laughs> wrong to ask her to go. I find the ARC Rewrite office in a fancy looking building on the outskirts of Akiba. This is a new background. Nice. Can't believe that Shining Finger works for ARC System Works. Oh my god. Stop this. I take the elevator up, but there's nobody there. I lean against the wall and wait. For about 30 minutes, a man dressed in a shirt and tie appears. I explain that I'm a relative Kiryu Mueka and ask for her contact info, but he gets an unexpected answer. We don't have an employee by that name. You don't? Damn, I've been tricked. I've been rused. Oh. oh. I should have known better. Moeka's working for CERN. Of course her place of employment is fake. Is this the end of the line? No, I can just go to Pasopachi. Just as I'm about to turn around and leave, the man pounds his hand as if he remembered something. Wait a second. There was a girl who worked here just two days before disappearing. I think her name might have been Kiryu. We might still have her resume. I frantically bow my head and ask him to look for it. He's reluctant, but acquiesces. 
The address listed on the resume leads me to a beat-up old apartment. Not the sort of place you'd expect a single young woman to live. I feel a strange unease as I approach the apartment. For some reason, there's a police car parked in front of the complex. A uniformed officer is standing out front. In one room on the second floor, room 202, Mueka's room, has a blue sheet covering the door. What's going on here? I walk up to the police officer. Excuse me, did the person who lived there move? Lives there. Huh? No? Then... Are you related? I knew her. You haven't heard? The police officer looks uncomfortable. <clears throat> the bad feeling in my gut is getting worse. What happened? Suicide. <laughs> what? Suicide? But why? When? Yesterday. No way! They took her to Chiyoda's Third Central Hospital. Doesn't look like she had any relatives. We don't know who to notify. Will you go see the body? I bow my thanks and leave. She's dead? Moeka's dead? What the f what's going on? That doesn't make sense. Suicide? Moeka. Moeka, who killed Mayuri in cold blood, committed suicide? Or is this part of the conspiracy? Could her own men have killed her then made it look like a suicide? Today is the 16th. On World 9 Alpha 1, Moika raided the lab on the 13th. Three days have passed since then. Each time I change world lines, Mayuri's death gets pushed back one day. So does Moika's raid. It hasn't happened yet on this world line. So why did she die? I don't get it. This is the first time this has happened. How should I deal with this? What should I do? I squat on the ground and cradle my head in confusion. If Moeka is dead, maybe Mayuri doesn't have to die. No, I don't think Convergence is that kind. Fate demands Mayuri's death. Whenever I try to stop it, something interferes. True, I'm the one who meddled with the timeline, but haven't I paid the price already? How did all of this happen? A few weeks ago, I was just a college student with a severe case of Chinibyo. Chinibyo. Save for Mayuri's grandmother, I never experienced the death of anyone close to me. Death had no place in my life. But how many times have I faced death these past three days? More when you count the loops I've made. My heart can't take it anymore. I don't know how much longer I can go on. One more. Just one more Gmail to cancel. If I could just get my hands on Moeka's phone. Time leap. Time leap. Moeka died yesterday around noon. I can go back to before that happened. The reason she died isn't important. Whether Mayuri's murderer kills herself is of no concern to me. I just need to cancel that D-mail. Upon returning to the lab, I casually look up at the second floor window. And what I see shocks me to my core. Electrical discharge? Someone is using the time leap machine! Who? Hmm. Mayuri and Daru should be at Komima. Not even Karisu should be here. I asked her to escort Mayuri yesterday. Besides, she's against changing the past. So who? The building shakes. 
The vibration reaches the street. I can't let this happen. The timeline mustn't be tampered with again. I need to stop it now. Who the fuck has left? I race upstairs to the lab. By the time I get there, the shaking has stopped. I quietly peek into the development room. Nobody's there. The door was unlocked. Anyone could have walked right in. How did I leave the door unlocked? I'm gonna... How could we be so careless? The time leap machine is still faintly warm. So somebody did use it. Who? Wait, so it zaps their entire body away? Did they time leap? This is the first time someone else has used the time leap machine. Just to make sure I checked the X68000. It's expected the history's been erased. Same thing happens when we send a email. There's nothing I can do about this. It worries me, but I have to focus on Moeka. I set up the time leap machine. The maximum leap time is 48 hours. To leap more than that, you need to leap 48 hours, then leap again. I'm explaining this because it has been, like, a long time since we last explained that in-game. 42-inch <laughs> CRT is on downstairs. That's plain as day since the discharge phenomenon just occurred. I put on the headgear. Preparations complete. Was that in the anime? Because I don't remember that. Ew, I don't think it was. That's new. Should I really leap now? Okay, we're going to drop a hot save here. Because it, seem, it seems like we have kind of lost the plot on the whole seeing what's going on with Mayushi this time. Yeah, this is new. Um, Did that save? Right there. Oh, sick. So, how are we in this episode? Oh, we, we still got, we're only halfway through. Well, let's, okay, let's so see let's what happens if we don't leave. <sighs> Sorry, I needed my coffee. I need your coffee too. All right, so uh, that's fine. Um, <laughs> we're not gonna leap now. Don't be ridiculous, of course I should. <laughs> Just a little more and I can save Mayuri once and for all. I know what will happen if I don't leap now. Myri will die, and I will taste that pain and despair once again. And then, I will leap. It's the same either way. Oh, I, I, I guess this is one of those but thou must loops. Or where we can do the thing and it won't matter, but I close my phone. There's no need to rush. Calm down. I can endure the pain if need be. I should exploit my one advantage, the time leap machine, to the fullest extent possible. And that means knowing exactly when Mayuri will die. So this is exactly like the other time we had this option, where we can go through the whole rigmarole but still wind up time leaving mm. back. Okay. Perhaps? The pattern suggests that Mayuri's death should happen around 7 or 8 tonight. But things are a little different this time. Moeka killed herself before Mayuri was scheduled to die. How much influence will that have on Convergence? There's a chance Mayuri won't die. We might already have one. In that case, I shouldn't waste my effort time leaping. I have no obligation to save Moeka. I'll wait until Karisu contacts me. So what confuses me here is that the person who used it seems to have disappeared. But we know from other world lines, or from, from our previous leapings, that Okabe still kind of is there after time leaping. It's just his memories that get sent back. It's not like literally his body getting sent back through time. So what exactly happened? How do we reconcile that? Well, presumably it's a teleporting thing, right? They changed the past in such a way that it made them no longer be here at this time, but somewhere else. Oh, but only seen... them. The thing is, like, the world line didn't change. Okab Okabe's reading Steiner didn't activate. Interesting. I hadn't thought of that. You're that, right. That's, what, that's why I'm confused about it. So, like, what... what Are they hiding somewhere in this room? I, I don't... Or maybe I'm looking too much into it, because this is genuinely new territory for us. Yeah. Anyway, it's 12.30 now. There's still about seven hours left. Time which I could be using to look up more stuff about Moeka, maybe? Yeah. I hear nothing but the slow, steady tick of the clock. The it's sound an is... awful dark noon, huh? It's 7 p.m. Oh, it's 7 p.m.? Remember? We skipped ahead seven hours. Oh, we skipped seven hours? No, I didn't remember that. Well, you just said, it, like, we got seven hours to wait. I assume that's what that... Anyway, the sound is echoing inside my head. Even if I plug my ears, it doesn't stop. I spent several hours searching for the IBM 5100, but, as expected, found nothing. Okay. Still can't imagine how Moeka's D-mail affected the computer's whereabouts. What does her phone model have to do with anything? 
Well, don't you know the new iPhone 11 comes with an IBM 5100 locator app? Oh, wow. That's very convenient. Yeah. Uh, does keeping the same phone somehow tell her that there's an IBM 5100 at Yanabayashi Shrine? That doesn't make sense. Even the butterfly effect must have limits. But on the other hand, truth is often stranger than fiction. Sometimes the simplest things have consequences that no one could ever imagine. So, I can't rule it out entirely either. In other words, I have nothing. I twist my lips into a sneer of self-mockery. It's 7.46pm, the moment of truth. If my Uri is indeed fated to die today, I should be hearing from Karisu soon. I hope nothing happens. All that I ask is to hear Mayuri's voice, so know, once and for all, that she is safe. Hello! Okabe, oh, she's... Uh, why? I don't... Kurisu is sobbing. So I know, even without asking, she saw Mayuri die. She just... I, I saw it happen. She's dead. Myuri's dead. This... This can't be... She suddenly collapsed. Why? It doesn't make sense. She's not breathing. She won't answer at all. Please, Mayuri. Okabe, what should I... What do I do? Help! Please! Mayuri's dead! I'm sorry for making you go through this. And with that, I hang up the phone. Maybe it's because I didn't see it happen, or maybe my heart has simply grown numb. But this time, I don't feel much pain. I hate myself for it. I pound my fist against the table. As expected, the deadline is around 8 p.m. on the 16th. Unless I change the world line before the time limit, Mayuri will die. I put on the headgear and activate the time leap machine. I must obtain Moeka's phone, no matter what it takes. I'm gonna drop one more save here just in case this is another option where we. Wow, we're almost filling up all the save slots. Oh, nope, it's doing it on its own. Okay. Noom. I like the noom sound. Wow, that's several days. I guess we, uh... I guess we did it twice. Yep, okay. I make several consecutive leaps to travel back to the 11th. When I arrive, it's just past 8 p.m. Heading out. <laughs> I leave the lab without waiting for others to respond. <laughs> Okabe just freezes in place, twitches and groans in agony for a while, and, like, gets a blank, glazed-over expression, and then suddenly straightens up and is like, I I'm out, and then leaves. <laughs> and no one reacts because that's just normal for him. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, I head to Moika's ratty apartment. There's no sign of the police this time. Thank God. 
Moika's suicide won't happen for another four days. <clears throat> I run up the iron stairs and in front of the door to Unit 202. The lights aren't on inside. I start getting anxious. Maybe she's not here. There's no intercom, so I reluctantly knock on the door. No reply. I try again with the same result. <sighs> Damn. Might as well try the doorknob. It's unlocked. What's up, Myri? You're coming back to the lab today. Are we coming back? I don't know, but don't worry. You don't have to worry about anything. It's unlocked. I take a deep breath. This could be a trap. Remember, we're not dealing with an ordinary person. Moika is a rounder, an agent of CERN. Yeah, that's right. She's also fucking hyper-competent, apparently, so... Yeah. If I die here, what will happen to Mayuri? Ugh, but I can't fall here. <laughs> well, come Carisu to think or... of it, we've lost our usual uh, anti-Moeka uh, anti tactic. Yep, which, which is, is to Suzu deploy Suzu-chan. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have Suzu anymore, so... Uh, will Karisu or Daru use the time leap machine to save her? I need to be careful. But at the same time, I can't save Mayuri by doing nothing. So I steal myself, open the door, and peek inside. The apartment is dark. Too dark to see. But I feel someone's presence. I step inside. The apartment is practically empty. Minimal furnishings. Only the barest necessities of life. But there, by the window, is a figure in the moonlight. A woman is sitting on the floor, her head bowed. There's no one else here. I approach the woman and stare down at her, gritting my teeth in a desperate effort to maintain control. Ever since the first time she killed Mayuri, I've tried my best to avoid thinking about this woman. But now, I have no choice. I can't accomplish my goal until I have the answers I need from her. I must obtain the IBN 5100 to escape the Alpha Attractor Field and rescue Mayuri. Kiryu Moeka. I had another name for her once. It hurts to remember. I force it to the back of my mind. Wow, not calling someone by the nickname. That right? means serious business. Like, that means Okabe's pissed. Like, even even when it's like, okay, serious time. Time to explain to Kurisu about how I'm time traveling and Mayushi's died infinite times and I've left infinite times and everything's fucked up and horrible. He still uses the nicknames then. Yeah. It's be like, like I, it, it's gotta be like a comfort thing for him or like a coping thing. Yeah. So the, the fact that he's intentionally not using it is significant. Can you hear me? Moika's fingers twitch. She sluggishly lifts her head. What the f- So this part is- I, Yeah, this is the same. But she doesn't look up. She stares at my feet instead. Oh no. Stop this. <laughs> Who? Slime Man. She does not say Slime Man out loud. <laughs> she can say Slime Man out loud. I'm <laughs> surprised you remembered that gag after how many episodes. Have you I bet you didn't think I would. I, I, I didn't think you would. She finally speaks in a frail voice. Moika has always had trouble speaking, but seems especially severe today. I notice her hair and clothes are disheveled. She looks awful, though I suppose that's no surprise, given that she kills herself in four days. <laughs> Facebook? Is it you? Slime man. FB? I've heard that name before. If I'm not mistaken, that's her superior's code name. Why won't you contact me? I did everything you told me to. The phone of Moika's hands glows faintly. She's still clinging to it, I see. <laughs> Did I do something wrong? I'll fix it, I promise. Just don't abandon me. I'll do anything for you, FB. 
返事をしてよ答えてよ私に指示を出して私はそれに従う命令して命令命令 Please answer me give me orders I'll obey tell me what to do tell me tell me <sighs> I'm at a loss for words. I wasn't expecting to find her in such a miserable state. She was so cold and so calm when she killed Mayuri. It's like she's a different person now. Yeah, what the fuck? Is this another effect of the world line change? But it's only been a week since she sent her D-mail. How could she have changed so much? I get on my knees and shake Moeka by the shoulders. Hey, can you hear me? Hey! <laughs> FV, why? Why won't you answer? Kiryu Moeka, hey! It's me, Okabe! No response. Moeka just keeps crying and mumbling to herself. I shake harder, but she doesn't react. She doesn't even resist. Looking down, I notice that she's typing rapidly on her phone. Bewildered, I look at the screen. Fub, 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 fub. <laughs> what the? What happened to Moeka? From what little I understand, it sounds like she's lost contact with her supervisor, FB. But I don't understand how that could turn Moeka into such a wreck. This is what happens when you lose your blue check. Oh my god. It doesn't matter. I don't care what happens to her. I'm here for one thing. Just one thing, Your Honor. Just one thing, Your Honor. Recalling my purpose, I reach for Moeka's phone. <laughs> no. A sharp crack echoes through the room. Moeka slapped my hand away. It didn't hurt, but her reaction was lightning quick. Now Moeka curls up into a ball, hugging the phone tightly to her chest. It was like this from the moment I met her. She never let go of her phone, not even for a second, as if it were the only thing keeping her alive. Oh shit, is that her soul gem? Oh my god, it might be her soul gem. No mail. No mail. You mean from FB? No mail. I gotta say, I love how genuinely disconcerting it is to finally meet up with Moeka again, and this. Mm -hmm. I make several more attempts to take her phone while she babbles incoherently, but she just slaps my hand away each time. Next, I try persuasion. I promise to help her search for FB if she lends me her phone. It's a lie, of course, though come to think of it, I would like a piece of FB, too. But that can wait until after I've saved Mayuri. <laughs> but Moeka doesn't buy it. If, that is, she heard me at all. <sighs> Damn it, we're not getting anywhere. Maybe I should take it from her by force. But what if she tries to kill me before I can send the D-mail? In her current state, she might not have the strength to retaliate. On the other hand, if she does retaliate, there's not much I can do against someone with a gun. What should I do? Her gun... Where would she keep it? I quickly scan the room, but there's no sign of it. Crap, that startled me. Hello. I stand up and move to the entrance where I can take the call without letting Moeka out of my sight. Where are you? <sighs> Sorry, I'm busy. 
Is it woman? <laughs> <laughs> is it a woman? No, no, no. <laughs> You're with a woman, aren't you? No, no, no. Read it one more time. Is it woman? <laughs> You're with a woman, aren't you? <laughs> is it woman? <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind? You really are a mainstream girl. Shut up. You promised you'd help with the phone wave, remember? Or is your lab mem number just for show? Get Daru to help. I, I cannot do it today. What are you doing? Where are you? Kiryu Moeka's apartment. So you are with a woman. You're the worst. Has she not met Moeka on this world line? I quickly give Kurisu a simplified version of the usual explanation. Kurisu listens attentively, as she always does. Maybe she's more considerate than I give her credit for. Yeah, for putting up with me, who's an asshole. <laughs> as soon as I finish, Kurisu gives me the, gives it to me straight. You have to take it from her by force. You've seen too many Hollywood movies. You're up against an agent of CERN. Play nice and you could end up dead. Yeah, but I can rely on y'all to time leap back and help me out, right? Uh... Don't hesitate. Remember, you're doing this to save Mayuri. I know you're pretty weak and scrawny, but you do get infinite tries because of the whole time leap thing. That's... yeah. Gee, thanks. At least she's not beating around the bush. Suddenly, she lowers her voice. Plus, it's a moral wash. I mean, time travel. I think that's what she's about to... <laughs> you might think I'm a monster for saying this. Not that I care what you think, Bye. but... <sighs> Kill her if you have to. Wow. Or, you know... Wow, she just came out and said it. You are a monster. But you're not a hypocrite. And that's what I love about you, Christina. Damn... L -l love uh what's the matter with her now i mean it i wish my convictions were as strong as yours well your conviction will be pretty strong after you kill shining finger oh my god <laughs> well thanks but that's not all right There's a reason you're willing to suggest murder as an option. How did you reach that conclusion? Good, you're still thinking. About murder. Me too. Always. Mm -hmm. I can't be certain whether your story is true, and I don't quite understand this attractor field hypothesis. Because frankly, nothing about you is attractive. Boosh. <laughs> But based on what you told me... If this Kiryu woman commits suicide four days from now, then that means her death flag is already active. In other words, stab stab, am I right? <laughs> oh my god. This is like the fucking bleakest. Alright. This world line has already approved her death. Jesus Christ. On previous world lines where that wasn't the case, you probably couldn't have killed her even if you tried. Whoa, whoa, hold Some on. On previous world lines where that wasn't the case, you probably couldn't have killed her even if you tried. Something would have happened to prevent it. Or possibly killing her would have caused a dramatic shift in world line divergence.
but on this specific world line, her death is already certain. As you've experienced with Mayuri's death, the result is what matters, not the process. I believe the same applies to Kiryu. It doesn't matter how she dies. In other words, I can kill her instead of letting her commit suicide? This is just like my favorite black comedy <laughs> film. <laughs> <laughs> She's already going to die, so that makes it okay? It's the kind of argument a murderer would make. I... No, I think you've got this backward. You're the one who's going to do the murder. Yeah, it's I'm you. I'm the one who's going to convince you. <laughs> Don't be a hypocrite. We're not talking about right and wrong here, Okabe. She's unforgiving as always, but it actually feels nice to speak frankly like this. But what about the law? Even if fate forgives me, society won't. As long as you have the time leap machine, laws aren't real. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I. On the one hand, I love how absolutely merciless Kurisu is. On the, o on the other, it's completely at odds with our characterization of her as time cop. <laughs> is it? <laughs> oh, unless she's explaining why she feels the need to kill everyone. <laughs> because she believes that this is true, therefore anyone who has that power must be stopped. Yeah. The result will be that you gained the necessary information without killing anybody. I understand. This also explains why she supposedly worked with CERN. Yep. She would. Yep. Just to be as close as possible to the one... Oh, your line. <sighs> Just remember one thing. You're responsible for what you do. By which I mean murder. <laughs> I guess that's quite a thing for me to say, huh? After telling you to kill her. It's fine. Your advice was truly becoming of a mad scientist. <laughs> Let's get this done, Okabe. Oh Bye. Let's get this bread, Okabe. Let's do it. She hangs up without another word. Strangely, I find Kurisu's harsh tone encouraging. Who does she think she is, a general? I manage a smirk as I close my phone. Moeka is still sitting on the floor. Kill her if you have to, Kurisu said. Moika did the same to us. She doesn't deserve mercy. Kill her or let her live. It's my choice. My responsibility. Even after I undo the murder, the memory of my crime will remain with me. That sin. That guilt. I'll have to carry that weight. I mustn't ever forget. That is what Kurisu meant when she spoke of responsibility. Murder is unforgivable, no matter the circumstances. Can you understand that, Kiryu Moeka? I reach for Moeka's phone. This time, there is no hesitation. <laughs> no! Moeka resists. I grab her slender hand and pin it to the window. How come we're only looking at her... Because Okabe can't bear to look her in the eye Ooh. while he commits a murder. Oh, holy fuck, that's it. Oh god. The glass rattles from the force, but thankfully doesn't break. On the other hand, I pry the phone away from Moeka's chest. Oh. Oh. She drives her foot straight into my solar plexus. The breath explodes from my lungs. I gasp for air. In a fit of anger, I raise my hand to strike. At the last moment, I hesitate. What happened to killing her if I have to? I know we're past the point of playing nice, but I've never hit a girl in my life. I don't consider myself a model gentleman or anything, but the idea that men aren't supposed to hit... Oh, God. Oh, he's one of these people. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Just insert that fucking um, Kazuma monologue here. Yeah. I believe in true gender equality. <laughs> God damn it. 
So instead, I wrap my hand around Moeka's neck and squeeze. When she tries to kick me again, I pin her legs under my own. I squeeze harder. My fingers dig into her throat. <sighs> she struggles for breath. I feel her throat moving as she gasps for air. What's up? I can finally see my reflection in her tear-reddened eyes. Now I have your attention. Etc. Mueka is under control, but now I don't have a free hand to take her phone. If I loosen my grip on her throat even slightly, it'll turn into a struggle again. Moeka is hiding her phone behind her back now. I need that phone. Should I let go of her hand or her neck? Give me your phone. Moeka weakly shakes her head. If you do not, I will kill you. I wonder if I even can. Can I do it with the time lead machine? It'll be the perfect crime, one that never happened. But still, do I really have it in me to murder someone? I don't know, but I have to try. Hand it over, or I will kill you. No words leave Moeka's lips, just rough breathing. Stalemate. Neither of us shows the other any openings. We're practically motionless, but our breathing is ragged. It's taking all my strength just to pin her down. Our rough breathing echoes through the room. For a moment, it even seems to synchronize. This is getting me nowhere. I remove my hand from her neck, then use my entire left arm to pin her against the wall in a guillotine choke. She starts groaning in pain. My right hand has her left up against the glass. My right hand has her left hand up against the glass. Now I pull her hand down and transfer it to the grip of my left hand. Now my right hand is free. I slide it behind her back and go searching for her phone. I have to lean in close to do this. I press my body up against hers. <sighs> Pain explodes in my jaw. I lean back. Moeka is readying another headbutt. I put more strength into the guillotine choke to stop her. Moeka's face twists in pain and she struggles to escape my grasp. My guillotine choke seems to be working. She doesn't have the strength to resist. If I push any harder, she really might die. I push harder. Moika writhes in pain. Tears fall from her eyes and drool from her mouth. So resistance weakens. My right hand finds Moika's phone. She still has it in a tight grip, but I manage to tear it away. I quickly release Moeka and step away. She bends over and coughs violently, but she still reaches out to me with tears in her eyes. She wants her phone back. I don't care. I look at the screen. Oh god, that's disconcerting as fuck. Yeah? Like like a different kind of disconcerting from everything else. That, ugh. God, I will say one thing. This scene is legitimately unnerving. Yeah. It shows an email draft with a string of FBs entered. I clear the text and start typing a new mail. But her phone's different from mine, so I don't quite know how to use it. Let's see. Just run, you asshole. Startled, I look up to see Moeka staggering to her feet. She's like a goddamn zombie. I quickly run outside and close the door behind me. Then I lead my entire body weight onto it so she can't open it from the inside. 
The doorknob rattles as she tries to open the door. Then she starts pounding on the inside. It's a good thing doors in Japan open out. You wouldn't see this in a Hollywood movie. <sighs> Thanks. I really needed that explained. Anyway, I have her phone. Now I just need to pretend to be Moeka and send the cancellation email. Moeka's changes to the past will be cancelled. The world line will change. The IBN 5100 will come back to me. And then we'll hack and discern. Mission complete. Fate won't have Mayuri this time. Victory will be mine. This is Makise. Get ready for a D-mail. Okay, but what's that noise? Don't worry about it. I'm having a little trouble here. So you didn't kill her? <sighs> Good, Good job. job. I, <laughs> I tell her Moeka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the idea of killing her in the abstract is a lot more funny than that scene. Yeah. I uh, I tell her Moeka's address. It's ready. And Mayuri? Oh, ah. Still here. She's at the brown tube workshop trying to get the manager to turn on the CRT. You didn't tell her anything, did you? About her death? Of course not. Good. Don't hang up yet. I put my phone down and resume typing into Moeka's phone. A middle-aged lady comes out of the apartment next door. Her eyes meet, so I put on a forced smile. The lady grins mockingly before going back inside. I wonder what she was thinking. Maybe she thought it was a lover's quarrel. In the mail, I write, model change, do it now, before sold out. Moeka's D-mail said, don't change models. The desire for limited edition, hard to find products is hard coded into Japanese DNA. Appealing to that instinct should work. The insistent pounding on the door grows louder. Now I hear groaning from the other side. I can't believe how persistent she is. Is her phone really that important to her? But I've already won. All I have to do is send the D-mail. I'll never forgive you, Moeka. But at least our relationship ends here. Let this be the last time we meet. I raise the phone to eye level. Take a deep breath. It ends now. I press send. Shit, out of data. Fuck. When does your cycle roll over? Can I, <laughs> like, another two days? Can I hold you here for another two days? No vertigo, no dizziness, nothing. Oh. Reading Steiner didn't activate. Oh. What? Why? She didn't send it, did Why she? didn't the world line change? Oh, when she has a new phone, so you can't just look back in the history. Oh. Did the phone wave fail to function? I bring my own phone back to my ear. Carisu is still on the line. Well? Did you send it? It's really disconcerting to have this entire scene happening with her banging on the door. Yeah, the entire time. Oh god. Yes, did it work? The discharge is occurring as normal. So it worked, right? Definitely. The world line didn't change. You mean it failed? Why? Consider the possibilities. Maybe the message wasn't enough to persuade Moeka to change models. Could we have sent it to the wrong date? It's July 31st, I'm sure of it. Oh. Check when the original D-mail arrived. Maybe her reaction will change if the new one arrives just after that. What a pain! Pounding on the door has ceased. Did she finally give up? No. She wouldn't give up. She planned to climb out the window and loop around? But we're on the second floor. That would be quite a feat. No, I think you forgot the other thing that she has, Okabe. I should still have some time left. Try sending different messages. 
If that doesn't work, I'll adjust the timer. You're a lifesaver. What's going on there? Is Mr. Braun freaking out? I can hear him shouting from below. Hashida and Mayuri are trying to calm him down, but who knows how long that'll last. I don't think there's much time left. I put my phone into my pocket without hanging up. Running out of time. I mean, actually, yeah. I change the message and send another email. But still, nothing happens. Hmm. That's definitely not... Change now, your phone is cursed. Let me make another one, send. No good. Why, what am I doing wrong? I'd like to ask Moeka, but if I go back inside now, she'll probably just attack me. Which reminds me, she's been awfully quiet. What is she doing now? Maybe she really did go out the window. I look around, I don't see her anywhere. I think, why did the D-mail work? I wipe the sweat from my brow, my entire body is soaked. It must be the adrenaline. What if Moeka changed addresses when she got a new phone? Take out my phone. Are you there? Still not working? I tried two more times, but nothing. I frantically consider my options as I stare hard at Moeka's phone. The walkway is dim, but Moeka's gaudy purple phone shines in the faint light. Wait. I take another good look at the phone. There's something wrong here. What is it? Okabe, what's wrong? Gaudy purple. Latest model. Removable LCD screen. Model number GG01. Mayas tell me there's nothing wrong. I saw this phone when Moeka sent her D-mail. Hmm. And many times before. She was never without it. It's the same. Nothing has changed. Oh, shit, dog! Nothing changed? Huh? What hasn't changed? Why hasn't it changed? Why is it the same as before Moeka sent her D-mail? Moeka's D-mail said don't change models. She could have had a different phone when she sent it. But she didn't. It was the same phone I'm holding right now. There's only one explanation. She never changed models to begin with. No nope. way. She lied to me. Moika's email wasn't about her phone. It explains how it affected the IBM 5100. It also explains why my cancellation emails aren't working. That sneaky little... The door violently shakes behind my back. It's much stronger than before. Stronger than before. <laughs> she must be ramming something hard and heavy against the door. I'm surprised she hasn't just gotten gone for her gun. Yeah. Like, that's what I thought was, was implied here, was that she was just going to get her fucking gun. But, alright. I quickly move away from the door. The door shakes again. I can see the frame starting to warp. She's crazy. I suppose I should be thankful she doesn't have a gun, but honestly, this is terrifying enough. But doesn't she? Wait, yeah, well, I guess if she had, if she did, she would have pulled it out by now. Maybe. Is, Maybe is not. Lot. It chills my blood to think of what her face must look like right now. I've never been the target of such single-minded obsession before. Well, okay. Maybe that's a mischaracterization. Of, but unfortunately, I can't run away. I need to face Moeka again and wring the information out of her. Both Ferris and Lukako remembered their D-mails. With prodding, Moeka will remember too. I need that information. Crap. I don't want to go in there. My teeth are chattering. This is pathetic. I thought I'd won when I snatched her phone. But now my advantage is gone. Okabe? Okabe, answer me! <sighs> Christina. What's that pounding? Are you okay? Moika's email wasn't about a model exchange. Also, Buster Wolf. <laughs> what do you mean? Sh 
She must have changed the text right before we sent it. That's why the cancellation mails aren't working. Did you check her history? It might still be there. And see, and that wouldn't have worked if she had had a new phone, but yeah. because she has the same phone. Her arrival history. Of course, even if it's not in her send history, it should be in her arrival history. I glare at the purple phone in my hand. It's a good thing Moeka didn't change phones. Now I know exactly where the D-mail went. That... I mean, yeah. Snazzy. I should have thought of that. Checking now. For a second there, I thought that would be easy. I should have known better. Honestly, at this point, just go get in a taxi and have it drive you around and then... Yeah. Moeka is not a casual phone user. Her mailbox has literally hundreds of entries over the last week. Almost all of them from FB. Some of my mails are sprinkled in. I don't have time to search through each of these mails. Even just the subject lines. Not to mention the pounding on the doors freaking me out. Christina, I seem to be in a spot of trouble. If I fail, I'm leaving the rest to you. Don't be ridiculous. If you're in trouble, then get out of- I hang up. The lady next door comes out again, alarmed by the escalating noise. She glares at me. But when she sees the magnitude of the door's damage, the lady opens her eyes in shock and runs back inside. I'm not leaning against the door anymore. Moeka could just open it, but she hasn't realized that. She's so fixated on getting her phone back, she'd destroy her own door. In any case, I don't have time to check her mail history. Put the phones into my pockets and move to the side of the door. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe, comment and subscribe.